Hi there. This is not the episode I intended to record <laughs> for episode 99 of Levels Plus Whenever. But uh, I think that I need to uh, ch weigh in on a couple of things that happened today, May 7th. Yeah, that's the date. Um, before I get to the episode I planned to record as episode 99, which was a uh, deep dive into why Unicorn Overlord is looking like my game of the year. But instead, <laughs> we're going to talk about uh, Microsoft and uh, their callous disregard of their talent that they had today. We'll probably get a little bit into uh, Nintendo as well, um, since they had a little tweet this morning that uh, would have been the news of the day had Microsoft not uh, <laughs> done what they did. That's not really how you want to win the news cycle, is with negative news, but they did. And then I've got some pickups that we will throw in here before we have the serious talk. All right, I've got my pickups. So I got the Moon Knight complete first season. Um, it took a shot on his transportation here, but that's okay. Uh, the discs inside seem fine. That's why I would have preferred to get them from Best Buy, but Best Buy is not carrying DVDs anymore. I also got two books. So I got the Like a Hurricane unofficial oral history of Street Fighter II. This is basically the design aesthetic for <laughs> their safety. Um, just a lot of text, lots and lots and lots of text uh, based on all of the excellent interviews that Polygon did with various Capcom current and ex-employees about the history of Street Fighter 2. Really cool stuff in this book. And last but not least, the NES Endings Compendium Redo. <laughs> That added 1989 into it. Uh, so that's why I got rid of the old one, is that I was getting a new one. But this was a really big help with research uh, for Femtendo, so I'm happy to get the upgrade in the end. So now let's move into the, uh, <laughs> the fun, the fun topic. So Microsoft is closing four studios. Well, technically they're closing three studios and reassigning a fourth. Um, and letting go of lots and lots of people. Uh, the studios that are closing include Alpha Dog Studios, which was a mobile studio that did Mighty Doom. Uh, Arcane Austin, which at, did the uh, 2017 Prey before getting assigned to Redfall. And then Tango Gameworks, uh, Shinji Mikami's former studio that he left sometime late last year. Um, and the developer behind what is probably Microsoft's best game <laughs> of 2023, Hi-Fi Rush, alongside the Evil Within duology and the Ghostwire Tokyo. Um... We're looking at the Polygon version of this news, but it was everywhere. Um, they're citing a reprioritization of high-impact titles, according to IGN. Um, Redfall players, you're completely screwed. If you, bought, if you bought upgrades or you were waiting for DLC, they're not coming. Eventually, you can apply for a refund, but that is not developed yet. Uh, kind of the same thing with Mighty Doom. If you spent real money for in-game currency, you can apply for a refund. Um, Hi-Fi Rush was huge last year. It was honestly the best thing Microsoft had. Um, Starfield kind of flopped. Redfall definitely flopped. Um, I believe Grounded and Pertinent. Pentiment, there we go. Pentiment 
came out last year, but they were smaller scale things. Um, but it was it should have been Starfield, but no, it was Hi-Fi Rush. It was Hi-Fi Rush that got all the acclaim. And here is your thank you, you're closed. Um, Arcane Leon still exists. They're still working on their own projects. Um, I do greatly appreciate what um, creative direct co-creative director Dinga Bakaba said today. Uh, to quote, this is absolutely terrible. Permission to be human. To any executive reading this, friendly reminder that video games are an entertainment cultural industry and your business as a corporation is to take care of your artists, entertainers, and help them create value for you. He went on to say, don't throw us into gold fever gambits. Don't use us as straw men for miscalculations, blind spots. Don't make our work environments Darwinist jungles. You say we make you proud when we make a good game. Make us proud when times are tough. We know you can. We've seen it before. The question, honestly, about all of this is, why is Microsoft closing these studios? Why is Microsoft shutting down development teams when they can't get games out they bought so many studios in the last five years as just a, a quick refresher <laughs> they own activision blizzard and by extension king makers of candy crush they own zenimax which owns bethesda so all of this stuff is bethesda by the way um so they also own id software um machine head i think is the machine games i forget the name of the of the wolfenstein team but it's one it's something like that um they were unaffected as far as we know but then we start breaking into all of the indie studios they bought double fine obsidian ninja theory um in exile we're back and i pulled up a list of all of the studios they own so they also own 343 industries which make halo for them now world's edge the coalition compulsion games that was we happy few oh it's the initiative that's working on the new perfect dark my bad uh, mojang studios behind minecraft rare of course playground games turn 10 undead labs and then the Bethesda network here that uh, is going to be reduced by half. <laughs> because Alpha Dog Tango Arcane is losing half of their team and Roundhouse is becoming a part of Zenimax Online. And this doesn't even have all the Activision stuff. Because um, that's still a thing. It's impossible to rally behind Microsoft when they are this callous towards their own people. They're Microsoft. They have the money to fund each and every single one of these companies for life without a question. Thanks to their other initiatives such as Microsoft Office. <laughs> Um, that alone probably is enough to sustain them. Um, what they are doing as a game development studio is sick. It's deprived. <laughs> it's the reason I'm wearing the Badlands shirt. Because it's offensive. It's disgusting. It's wrong. I'm angry about it. This is not how our industry should be operating and yet over and over and over this year last year so many people have lost their livelihoods because of companies being so big that they look at their development teams as mere pawns and in investments they are trying to appeal to shareholders and investors with these types of decisions. They are trying to 
justify letting go of hundreds, if not thousands, of employees to make a, the the rich richer. And it's bullshit. <laughs> it is absolute garbage. And I'm calling out Microsoft here because I called out Sony earlier. And I'm calling out Microsoft as one of the three console publishers. You have a higher, quote unquote, higher stake in the success of this industry. And by terminating entire studios on a whim, because, oh, the games we asked them to make that are not necessarily their wheelhouse didn't succeed. Or in the cases where they do succeed, it's still not good enough. Hi-Fi Rush, for all intents and purposes, was an exceptionally well-made game that dropped out of nowhere onto Game Pass. So lots of people played it, but they didn't pay money for it because it was on Game Pass. You're paying Microsoft for Game Pass. So Tango probably saw nothing, hardly anything, for their hard work on that game in the grand scheme of things because they didn't sell it. <laughs> it was on Game Pass. And that's all of these studios, every single one of them is in that boat now. All of them are in that boat where their games are on Game Pass and they're not necessarily making money for the studio because Game Pass is making money for, for, for Big Daddy Microsoft. So who's next? You know, who's going to be the next on the chopping block? Who is Microsoft going to, going to just wickedly deprive their entire livelihood? Steal their IP. Keep it as part of them. It worked great for Electronic Arts. It worked great for Activision Blizzard. Hey. <laughs> evil begets evil in this case. So yeah, I, I am extremely upset and disappointed by this. Um, this, this is completely bullshit. And uh, every single time I have had a, just a, a moment's thought of, of getting in the Xbox system, the new Perfect Dark, for example, I, I just have to go, you know, I hear about these things. And I'm so happy I've pulled out. I have no desire to play that new Perfect Dark game. I have no desire to engage in the Microsoft ecosystem. Um, and uh, the only thing that I will remotely support is Nintendo Switch Online Rare Games. Because that's, that's the deal. And I imagine Activision stuff might start showing up eventually. But th this is just wrong. It's just wrong. Shame on you, Microsoft. Shame on you so much for just doing bad, bad things to people who ultimately gives a shit about investors when you are Microsoft. You shouldn't. You have the money. You just spent billions of it to acquire Activision Blizzard. You spent millions, two billions, to buy all these companies. Let them work for you and not destroy them at a moment's notice because you just want to please some sort of outside fat cat. It's just sick. <laughs> it's just, it's really sick. Nintendo tweeted out this morning via Shintaro Furukawa, the president of the entire company, to say, quote, we will make an announcement about the successor to Nintendo Switch within this fiscal year. It will have been over nine years since we announced the existence of Nintendo Switch back in March 2015. 
we will be holding a Nintendo Direct this June regarding the Nintendo Switch software lineup for the latter half of 2024, but please be aware that there will be no mention of the Nintendo Switch successor during that presentation. At a financial meeting, it is said that when answering a question if this was a brand new, completely original console line or a successor to the Switch, Furukawa answered that it is Switch Next Model is the appropriate way to describe it. So it won't be officially translated for a bit. We're going off of a senior research analyst at MST Financial. But it wouldn't be too shocking and given a lot of the rumors that uh, this is indeed a Switch Two Switch follow up Super Switch, whatever fancy nickname you want to call it that Nintendo won't call it. <laughs> it sounds like it's an it's another Switch, and will be in that ecosystem. There's a lot to speculate on, and a lot of people have already done so by the time I record this. So all I'm really going to uh, state is that I hope this is accurate. I hope that this is a Switch successor that is backwards compatible with not only the software that they've released for the Switch, but the hardware. So controllers, Joy-Cons, Amiibo, all that stuff will carry over. It's just really the system itself that needs an upgrade for more advanced tech. And what would be getting slightly pie in the sky hopes is that the sequel to this Switch will have better processing power and will make current Switch games run better than they currently do. That's doubtful, but one can dream. Uh, there's a few Switch games that I think would greatly benefit from that. Um, Tears of the Kingdom ran really well considering how much stuff was happening in it, but I bet it would run better on a Switch successor. <laughs> um, Link's Awakening had grass problems. Pokemon Scarlet and Violet needed a new engine. <laughs> so uh, that is encouraging. Um, and it's not surprising. The Switch really has been indicating a slope of decline. And that's not a bad thing because the game's for the most part, coming out this year so far, have been good. Um, but they're not system sellers. Uh, another code recollection and Endless Ocean Luminous are not going to really get Switches off the shelves. But they are going to support the already large install base with genres that Nintendo has not been doing for a little while. It's, it's kind of playing up the market and addressing more types of gamers. That's great. Um, and then we have some really good remakes coming up. Paper Mario is about to come out. Um, Luigi's Mansion 2 is going to be out next month. Um, and then a couple original games. Uh, Princess Peach Showtime. Um, came out and seemingly did pretty well for itself. So Nintendo's had a fine first half, but they probably haven't like knocked anything too loose in terms of selling systems. Um, Splatoon 3 Side Order was probably the biggest DLC thing they've done. Um, and the only things outside of what I've said that we know about is Metroid Prime 4, which is probably a Switch successor game at this point. Uh, the next Pokemon Legends game, Z-A, whatever they decided to call that, that's next year. And then there's this ESRB leak of Nintendo World Championship NES Edition, which is probably an NES Remix-esque style game that might drop as a shadow drop during Nintendo's Direct in June, or will be a Nintendo Switch Online game. Um, and Nintendo Switch Online's actually been doing pretty decent the last month 
and a half. Um, I don't know about the whole year, but I would say it's some pretty decent um, for how trickle that service is. <laughs> Great to get more Genesis games. It's been a while. Um, I know, I literally said that last episode. Anyway, <laughs> I'm getting distracted. Um, so, yeah, there will be plenty of uh, Nintendo stuff to talk about over the next year. Um, but I feel like it's time. Yeah, so they announced the Switch in 2015. It came out in 2017, so it's had a seven-year run. Probably will be eight by the time it's all said and done. That's a very long shelf life for a console these days. I mean, Sony's already thinking about the PlayStation 6, apparently, and don't have any other games coming out this year outside of Helldivers 2, which they almost completely sabotaged <laughs> in their uh, egotistical callousness. Callous is my word today. Um by nearly forcing all the PC Steam players to get a PlayStation Network account. <laughs> oh, Sony, your hubris. When you are doing well, always... <laughs> always makes me laugh at your haughtiness. All right. That's enough ranting, laughing, <laughs> and hoping for one day. Uh, that that's just how I feel about Microsoft, Sony, and Nintendo, respectively. Is uh, I, I'm angry at Microsoft so often, and I laugh at Sony so often, and I'm hopeful for Nintendo so often. <sighs> well, that's the end of what was not expected. Uh, we'll do the Unicorn Overlord episode as episode 101, because I've got 100 already done. It just needs to be edited, and it's going to probably be in a couple weeks. So, what is it? You'll be surprised. Maybe you won't. Maybe you've already guessed what it is. Maybe I already said what it is, and I don't remember. <laughs> what, is, what is brain? Anyway, I appreciate you watching. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful set of days until I see you again. Take care.